I'm gonna get up after one more video. It's officially fall. Ugh, what time is it? Your closet is. I can't believe I wasted all that time. What should I do today? Just one more video. I really should get this laundry done. Damn it, I've been sitting here for like an hour. So maybe you've heard people say, oh, you're just really lazy, or oh, you're just really unmotivated, or you just don't want to do things, or why do you spend 10 hours on your phone? Why do you watch Netflix for so long? Why don't you go to bed at a reasonable time? Why don't you do your laundry? Why don't you do X, Y, and Z? You might have even had those feelings about yourself. So if you're watching that earlier and you're like, yeah, that's me. Let's unpack the freeze response, aka hypoarousal. Welcome or welcome back, friends. If you're new here, my name is Simone Saunders, and I'm a licensed therapist and social worker in Calgary, Alberta. This page is all about lifestyle, mental health, and wellness, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into it. Whenever we think of emotional dysregulation or nervous system dysregulation, we always think of these big emotional responses. We think of panic attacks, anger outbursts, anxiety, crying breakdowns. But what we don't think about is the opposite, when you're just numb or you're frozen. Let's all get on the same page and let's talk about the nervous system and the brain. The best metaphor that I like to use for the brain and the amygdala in specific is a smoke detector. So our amygdala is kind of like our emotion center of the brain. And the way that it functions is similar to a smoke detector. So if you're going to go make a snack, you're going to go make a grilled cheese and you burn the grilled cheese, that smoke detector is going off. If you burn your house down, that smoke detector is also going off. That's similar to our amygdala in the sense that our amygdala doesn't really know the difference between real and perceived danger. So our amygdala is going to go off regardless and send us into an automatic response just in case that we can stay safe. So what happens when our amygdala is turned on the smoke detector of our brain is our prefrontal cortex turns off. Our prefrontal cortex is our logic, our understanding, our ability to think things through. It holds our coping tools, allows us to essentially just make logical decisions. And you're probably like, okay, that feels a little bit counterintuitive. Why would your logical brain shut off? The reason why is because it's actually counterproductive to have the logical brain on in a moment of imminent danger. So your body needs to make a split decision about, okay, how am I gonna survive this situation? rather than taking the time to logically think things through. For example, if a bear were to come through this office right now and I were to be able to think, okay, can I fight this bear? Do I have enough stamina to outrun the bear? Okay, should I play dead? Would that be the best option? I would be already. So the way that the amygdala functions is actually really, really important. Sometimes it causes us trouble because our smoke detector goes off when we're literally just making soup and it's a lot of steam. There's no fire, no burnt toast, there's no burnt grilled cheese, just a pot of soup. So the automatic responses that the amygdala sort of sends us into is fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. So in order to explain these, I like to use the window of tolerance. So the window of tolerance in the middle is a state where we're not necessarily calm, we're just emotionally regulated. So that means that our prefrontal cortex is turned on and we can just deal with life's challenges. So the stressors that come at us, frustrations, sadness, life events, big feelings, we can handle those things and we can regulate ourselves. We can ask for help. We can logically think things through. When we get outside of our window of tolerance, which is the red or the blue zone, that's when we can't handle it and that's when that smoke detector is turned right on. Something important to note here is that you personally don't decide what you can or can't handle your nervous system decides that for you. So if your nervous system decides, I cannot handle having this tough conversation with my boss, you will be in hyperarousal or hypoarousal. Hyperarousal, the red zone, is more consistent with your more emotionally activated states. So your fight or flight response. So that could look like anxiety or panic attacks, addiction, anger outbursts, impulsivity. Whereas hypoarousal, the blue zone, is kind of the opposite. That's your freeze and fawn response. Fawn is always a question I get asked, and fawn is more so of the people-pleasing, sort of acquiescing to whatever people want. That's that response. Or the freeze response is sort of, you're numbed out, you might feel dissociative, you might feel really, really, really tired or lethargic, you might feel unmotivated, unable to do things. That's the freeze response, and that's where we're gonna be spending a lot more time today. A good way that I like to describe the freeze response is kind of like trying to walk through mud. So if you're trying to get to a checkpoint at the end, maybe meters and meters away, you can think to yourself, okay, I should be running faster, I should be walking faster, I should be taking bigger steps in order to get to the destination. Consistency of the mud doesn't really allow for you to go any faster than you currently are. So if you think about when you're doom scrolling, I, as well as 
many others have had the thoughts of, okay, just two more videos, just one more video, I need to go to bed, etc., etc., etc. But when it comes to actually doing that, putting the phone away, that's when it becomes difficult because we're stuck in the mud. So your nervous system is just as much dysregulated in the freeze response as in the fight or flight response. So what happens when we've been through a lot of hardship, things that are really difficult for us, is our window of tolerance shrinks. And what that means is our ability to handle different levels of discomfort, different levels of emotional activation becomes really small. And so things that feel small might bring us out of our window. So the meeting with your boss, that might feel small to someone else, but that maybe brings you out of your window because you perhaps have a smaller window of tolerance, and maybe that's because of the experiences that you've gone through. The goal of awareness and understanding is widening that window so that you can experience a little bit more emotional activation, a little bit more discomfort without your nervous system feeling completely dysregulated. Something I've noticed a lot in my work with people is that we're really unaware of the things that activate that in ourselves. So we might feel like, oh, this just happens all the time. This is just my every night. And it's important for us to get curious about, okay, what happens every night to where my nervous system is feeling like, okay, this isn't a safe place to be. It's not safe to just be with myself. When we start to kind of get curious about the environments that we're in, the people that we talk to, and how that impacts our nervous system, it can give us a lot of information about what dysregulates us. And I think a lot of times we try and use a framework of shame in order to sort of fix ourselves. So why don't you do X, Y, and Z? Why are you so lazy? Why don't you have enough motivation? Why don't you have enough determination? You should be farther in life, etc., etc., etc. But the thing about shame is that it kind of perpetuates the cycle that's currently happening already. It might change things for a little bit but eventually your nervous system is really tired of just being very overactive and goes back to the freeze response. And so I use the word curiosity intentionally because curiosity has sort of a shame-free lens. It allows us to understand what's happening with the sole intent of just gathering information. So if X, Y, and Z is something that is really impactful for your nervous system, whether or not it feels silly, stupid, objectively small, whatever the case, None of that really matters. It's just the information that we're looking for. So what can I do to widen my window of tolerance? How can I get to a space where I am not just doom scrolling all the time, where I'm not on Netflix all the time, where I'm not sitting in my room just daydreaming all of the time? Number one is to get curious. Get curious about what's happening in your day-to-day -day life. When do you feel the most numb? When do you feel the most frozen? When do you feel the most called to engage in these behaviors like doom scrolling, like Netflix, like sitting there and daydreaming. Number two is that with hypoarousal, the blue zone, the freeze response, in order to get out of that zone, we need more activation. Whereas the red zone, hyperarousal, we need less activation. So if you notice that you, a big wave of exhaustion comes over you, it could be that your body is physically tired and maybe you just need some sleep. It could also be your nervous system feeling really dysregulated. So I always encourage experiment with going for a walk going and doing something physical, whether that's just stretching, moving your body in some capacity, and see what happens afterwards. You might find that you feel the exact same afterwards, you might find that the exhaustion has lifted. And so experimenting with these things can help you understand, okay, if my exhaustion is lifted as a result of body movement, as a result of more activation, then the probability of your nervous system being dysregulated during that moment where you're feeling really lethargic and tired is fairly high. Other things that can be helpful outside of movement is I always recommend having sour candies on hand. Now this will kind of shock your nervous system to being in a present state. So if you're scrolling on social media, you're doom scrolling and it's really difficult for you to get out of that state, keep a pack of sour candies by your bedside, pop one of those things in, and it will give you a bit of a jolt of awareness of your entire body and what's happening. And that might give you the ability to close that gap, put down your phone, and do whatever it is that you've been trying to do for the past little while. The last suggestion, other than getting to the root of what's causing that dysregulation, is calling it out. When you are doom scrolling, when you are sitting there daydreaming, and you're able to say, okay, right now my body's in the freeze response, right now I'm in hypoarousal. That in itself can allow your body to gain the awareness of, oh, I actually don't feel safe right now. And in understanding that and being aware of that, it sometimes gives you the ability to initiate action. If you have any questions, comments, or thoughts, feel free to leave them down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.